Hello, my name is Romet and today I'm going to share some tips for new jet pilots in Battlefield 4. So first, let's talk about the keyboard controls. I like to use W for the pitch down button, left shift for the throttle up and left control button for throttle down. I like to set the vehicle sensitivity to 100% and I use a 2000 uh, TPI mouse. The high sensitivity makes it really easy to do barrel rolls just by swiping the mouse to either side. Next you could adjust the video settings and I would start by setting the brightness very low because it is easier to see where your shots go when the background is darker and then you can aim better. I tried out different vehicle field of vision options while I was recording jet videos and keeping the setting at 74 seems to be pretty good because it makes it easier to follow the enemies uh, in dogfights. However, when you become more skilled with jets, you could try setting it even higher. And next, you could uh, turn off the motion blur, and I would also recommend changing all of the graphic settings to low, in order to avoid any frame rate issues when you pull some crazy maneuver and get very close to the ground. I do have the mesh quality settings set to ultra, because it might help you spot the enemies from a longer distance and I also have the anti-aliasing post option set to medium so that the videos would look a bit better. Now the vehicle loadout settings depend on the game mode and the type of jet that you will be using. In the stealth jet I would use the 20mm option for the main gun because it is more accurate, it works well at long range and it also has more ammo. More powerful weapons might seem appealing at first, but if you cannot hit the target and you quickly run out of ammo, then they aren't much use to you. You only have one type of ammo for the attack jet's main gun, but it does a lot of damage and it's great for quickly taking out helicopters and for finishing off ground targets. When it comes to the secondary weapon, I would recommend the laser guided option for both of the jets uh, in the Conquest game mode. Uh, because it helps you find vehicles on the ground and if you don't have much experience with jets then it is good to start off with lock-on weapons so that you wouldn't have to worry about your aim. I also like the fact that you can use these rockets accurately from a medium range so that you could hit your targets without getting very close to the ground and they are also good for taking out moving vehicles. Uh, you can even lock on to empty vehicles and some of the enemy's equipment so that you could kill any infantry that is standing next to it. And it can also lock onto helicopters and jets if someone marks the target for you with a laser designator. However, once you get better at the game, you could try out other secondary weapons as well, and a good pilot can get a lot of kills uh, with most of them. Now, if you're playing gear superiority instead of conquest, then you could use the active radar rockets for your secondary weapon so that you could reduce the mobility of the enemy or to just finish off a burning jet before your teammates steal your kill. Active radar rockets are useful because they can steer themselves towards a nearby jet without you having to lock onto it. However, if you're trying to impress people, then you should just uh, stick to the main gun and it's best not to become too reliant on active radar rockets because if you go back to conquest mode, then they won't be available for the attack jets and stealth jets uh, need the laser guided weapon to take out uh, many ground targets. I would use the ECM countermeasures in both jets, because although they won't always uh, stop every rocket, they can temporarily hide you from the enemy's air radar, and they also create a cloud of smoke which can mess up the visibility for the enemy jet and then you can make a quick and unpredictable turn in a random direction to shake him off your tail. As for the upgrade options, I would use stealth coating uh, in the attack jet to help me evade the enemy's rockets. The stealth jet, however, can use afterburners to quickly get away from rockets, so 
so it may be better to use the belt feeder there so that you would always have ammo when you need it. Next I would like to talk about flying. Uh, I see many new pilots flying straight towards the enemy's base and dying almost instantly. Uh, flying in a straight line in front of an enemy jet is a good way to get killed really quickly. You should at the very least use your mouse to do some barrel rolls in order to make it more difficult for anyone to hit you. But if there is an enemy on your tail then you should also turn away and after making a half circle you can switch on the ECM and quickly turn in a different direction to confuse the enemy. Then you should focus on the air radar and also look for the enemy jet's vapor trails uh, to figure out where the enemy is going and where to turn to get on his tail. Uh, following the enemy with air radar may seem a bit confusing at first, but the more you practice the easier it becomes. Uh, you can also use the right mouse button every once in a while to see behind you. Uh, for example, if the enemy jet has just flown past you, you can use this button to see where he is turning so that you could outmaneuver him. One very important tip I can give to beginners is to keep tapping the slow down button, the left control, while turning so that you could make sharper turns. The jet tends to gradually speed up on its own so there is usually no need to increase the speed yourself unless you have been holding down the slow down button and stopped moving. Or you might sometimes need to speed up to escape the enemy's rockets. You should also remember that you can quickly gain speed by flying downwards and that you will lose speed when you are flying upwards. Now, if you cannot shake the enemy off your tail and you are getting tired and desperate, then you could start doing crazy turns and loops very close to the ground and buildings while turning on the ECM in the hopes that the enemy will either crash or get shot down by your teammates. There is a chance that a friendly helicopter will also start shooting at the jet and you can even draw some attention by shooting at the helicopter yourself. Or if you just survive long enough then your wingman might show up and kill the enemy so that you could finally start picking off ground targets. It is a risky maneuver but if you're about to die anyway then you have nothing to lose. When I spawn in a new jet, I might fly really high and try to sneak up to the enemy jet from the side while switching on the ECM when I get close so that he wouldn't see me on his air radar. It's also good to try and shoot at him from a distance so that when he makes a sharp turn you can still easily keep him in your sights. You should also avoid the enemy space because if someone marks you with the spot button then an automatic anti-air weapon will be shooting at you from that base. It's much better to lure the enemy jets into your base where you can spot them and shoot them down with the help of your anti-air weapon and your teammates. You could also try to save your ammo by shooting in short bursts until you start seeing hit markers and then you can empty the whole gun at the enemy. If you keep missing shots that should have hit then you need to pick a server with a lower ping. If your ping is over 100, then it can get more difficult to hit the enemy jet. And if you keep missing good opportunities, then you can end up losing the fight. So that's about it. Uh, there are some more complex maneuvers that good pilots might sometimes use. But the general advice that I have shared here should be enough to get you many kills and even some small kill streaks. I have managed to get around uh, 2000 kills myself without doing anything too complicated because most players seem to have very little experience with jets and it doesn't take a lot to deal with them. Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful and if you have any questions or suggestions, then you can leave them in the comments below. I'd also like to say thank you to everyone who has subscribed to my channel and who liked and shared the videos. And if you liked this video, then you will probably enjoy watching some of my previous videos as well.